Hey everybody, welcome back. Ooh, sorry about that. Um, I thought I'd show you some dyes I've picked up over the last couple weeks and maybe sit and cut some and show you some ways to um, fancy them up or change them up a little bit. Um, Hobby Lobby last week, I don't know if they do this week, but last week they had Sizzix dyes and Spellminders. I think just Sizzix and Spellminders. Anyway, they had dyes on sale. I've been eyeballing this one for a long time. It's just so stinking cute. Little bubblies. So I finally bought it. And they were 40% off. I bought this Tim set to add to my um, Tim Foliage collection. This one's from Spellbinders, which is really cool. It's a thank you, but the, um, the offset will actually emboss. So I thought that was pretty neat. And then this little guy. Oh my gosh. I ordered this a couple weeks ago. It makes a teeny tiny little bow. It's from the Stamps of Life, uh, Stephanie Bernard, and I just ugh, been dying to try it. This one was a Tuesday morning find. That's a Tim Holtz frame, and I thought I'd cut this out of some chipboard. Maybe I might even have some grunge board. Makes a couple of different frames. I thought I like this one especially. It's got the Baroque kind of thing. And then this is the um, tattered florals. The original Bigs die. I have the Thinlet set. Makes, you know, it's the same thing but makes little ones. This makes the giant ones. So I actually picked up a used Big Kick, which is a big shot just in a different outfit um, from a, you know, off the marketplace, a lady locally. And she, she uh, gave me this with it. And the Dragonfly, which I don't, I don't have a use for the Dragonfly, so I'm trying to sell it off. But yeah, I'm super excited. So we're going to try all these out. I especially want to make some little bows. Oh. And one thing I appreciate about Sizzix. Whoa. I think my power just flashed. Hold on a second. I'm back. Yeah, the power did flash. It was out for about 15 minutes. And that was before the rain even started. So maybe it was from everybody running their AC. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's see. Oh, yeah, so what I was saying about Sizzix. They're thinlets, which are usually in a plastic bag in the envelope. This is the first time I've got one that wasn't in the envelope. But they come in an envelope. And what I do, let me pull one out here, is I will... Um... Fine. Take them out of their plastic baggie that they come in and get some um, vent, magnetic vent cover, and I cut it to fit and then just slide it down in. This one had a few extra little ones that didn't fit, and I could cut a second, second piece, but I'm not going to. And then I keep the front, it's got this piece on the back. I tear this off and then I keep that and put it in the, in the plastic envelope. And you can get the envelopes empty um, online or even Joann's or Hobby Lobby. Well, not, Ho not Joann's, but Hobby Lobby. So this one, I need to get some. I'm out of vent cover stuff, so I need to get some more. Unless anyone has a, a better alternative than the vent cover. Because I will say the vent cover is kind of floppy. So, like I have a few of the letter sets. And they're tiny, you know. And you get five thousand letters in this in this set. It's a great little set, but um, because the vent stuff is kind of flexible, like they don't they don't stay put very well. They stay on it, but they move around and stuff, and it annoys me a little bit. So, oh, see, missed a piece. That's why I need magnet. I think the first thing I want to try cutting, though, is this. Because I love it. I love it. Now, I did see We Are Memory Keepers um, has a little thin lit dye, thin dye storage thing coming out. And it's basically a plastic box. Kind of makes me think of the, um, I was going to say it's not there, but yeah, there it is. That the, uh. Oh, what do I want to say? Close to my heart sells for their stamps. It's like that type of box with magnetic sheets. And I might 
pre-order a pack of just the magnetic sheets and see how stiff they are is to see if it will be worth switching. So, like I said, now instead of the cuddle bug, I'm using a big, uh, big kick, which makes me happy. And, you know, they still have the old multi-purpose platform, which is great. I remember when this thing came out. Dude, I worked at the scrapbook store and we used, we sold so many of these because they just made life so much easier. It was crazy. Okay, so. Let's see. I definitely see, and the lady that I bought it from, she used it a little bit. You can see some marks, but she didn't use it a lot. Uh, let's see. I think we need glitter. Because glitter is always the answer for me. Let's do... Ooh, blue. How about some blue? And I am ordering the metal precision plate um, this week because... Everybody says it will make the, the intricate thin dies cut a lot better. So, I'm going to buy it and find out. Because it's within my crafting budget for the month. So, alright. So, let's see. Put this in here. I'm going to lose a couple of bubbles, but that's a, that's those are the ones that are actually attached. That's fine. Put that there like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I wonder if I can fit the bow on here at the same time. Let's try. I just... Ugh. I've been eyeballing this for a long time. It's been in my cart, on Amazon, out of my cart, in my cart, out, in, out, in, out. I finally just, just bought it. Fiskars also... Fiskars makes a punch that's supposed to make a bow. And I'm not sure if it's the same size as this or not. I've always wanted to punch. And when I went to look for it in, it was nowhere to be found. So I'm not sure if they're not making it anymore. All right, my big kick is off to the side. Roll this through. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see what we got. Do we have bubbles? <laughs> Actually, that piece is small enough that I can do some stars. I'm going to keep that. Oh, sweet. So cute. Look at that. Little circles that are usable. I think I might have to get my pokey poker out. Pokey poker. Pokey poker. Sounds like a TV show. He's a pokey poker. Like a dog. Like a bass hound that walks real slow. Pokey poker. Alright, let's see here. Alright, let's use this. That's Alright, so that's not a usable circle. I think this would be great with the Simon Hurley stamp set I got. That is, um, it's a mermaid set. It, it just tickles me. It's so stinking cute. I'm thinking this would be great on a card using that stamp set. So I might have to marinate on that and maybe uh, design a card and do a video. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah, so. Isn't that pretty? So, speaking of videos, flipping YouTube um, hit me with a. Uh, oh, sharp brain today, sorry. Um, copyright strike. Twice. I'm like, what the what? You, with music that I've used for videos, like the background music, that came, it's, I mean, I've been using it for a year, it's been okay, it hasn't given me any trouble, that, um, it's the actual poker, that it's free music that came with my, with the, um, Windows 
video maker and a computer. So I'm like, what the hell? Oops, sorry, I didn't say that. What the what? Okay. So let's see, do I know how to do this? Probably not. Well, let's just cut a few and then we'll figure out how to put them together later. All right, let's do another color. Oh, let's see. Oh, here's another blue. Another good water. Water blue. Now I gotta poke the rest of this stuff out. So I'm gonna use it again. Dun, 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 dun. I think that's it. This last one. There's another actual circle. Okay, keep it. Oh, you hear the rain? Which, you know, after three solid months of no rain, I mean, we had a little sprinkle here and there. Not enough to, um, actually even get anything wet. Ooh, keep that. Um, we really needed it. Like the plants, no matter how much you water them, the plants were dying. Because our, they don't like our water, right? They need actual nature, <laughs> nature water. So, that's great that we're getting the rain, but, you know, of course it's feast or famine. You either don't have no rain or you have all the rain. All right, we're gonna roll this through. Oops, it shifted on me, hold on. Shifty, shifty. Put it back in its place. It put you in your place. All right. All right, what's going on here, homie? There we go. Positioning is the answer. These little thin metal dies, I like to be doing twice, even if they're not intricate, just just cause, especially if I'm using like heavy paper like this, you know, glitter paper. That's heavy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I hope these bows fold up right, cause that's gonna be cute, cute, cute. Oh, and I'm still putting die cut packs together for sale, so if you want one, let me know. I sell them through Facebook Marketplace. So if you're one of them people that you like die cuts, but you don't want to, maybe you don't have a die cutter, you know, you don't want to do the work. Oh, this was being a piece of paper, got the little guy in there. Um, I do packs of die cuts for five dollars and there's usually well there's always a ton in there um, and I mean I don't do them to order I just do packs and I show what's in them so you can decide if that's a pack for you oh y'all look at that that's almost a Mickey <laughs> see these these pieces are about this size at least I can save and punch um, with my teeny tiny punch hearts and stars and things like that so that's why you see me saving this stuff off to the side because I'll go through it and punch what I can and then before I actually throw the scraps away because that's how I roll I use all the things I do not even though I'm a paper crafter, I don't feel like I really generate a whole lot of trash. And I recycle what I can. Like if I have little paper scraps that don't have, adhe have adhesive or paint on them, like if they're inky, I'll recycle them. But if they, um, if they don't have ink on bleh, I'm telling you, words are hard today. If they don't have paint on them or adhesive on them, I will throw them in the recycle. But even that, I don't have a whole lot of, because like I said, I use, I use everything. There we go. Oh, I love this so much. So much.
much. All right, that's probably all we're gonna get out of that. I'm gonna do another, probably two more of this blue in the bubbles because I think it's gonna be great for um, under the sea and stuff like that. I'll go ahead and throw the bow in there. to the machine again. Roll it through. Roll it back. That makes me happy. Okay. Stamps of life. such a pretty blue. I've got this part, this part. Just line them up on my paper cutter. That way at least I know where they are. <laughs> before the marine even came so all I could figure is everybody running their AC too much it's kind of like a maybe a rolling blackout type of deal or something which I don't even know if they do that down here but it sounds plausible all right pokey thing which this is the Dollar Tree pokey thing I don't recommend it this is the second one I've bought because um, the first one, the pokey thing just came out, and now look, this one bent. So, I don't recommend it. I, mean, I already spent $2 on two of them. I might as well just spend the $6.99 and buy the actual Sizzix or Tim Holtz or whatever pokey thing. Because it's kind of annoying. It's kind of like when you're trying to put craft space together and all the money we spend on different shelving types and containers and yada 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 and all that stuff we spend over the years I thought there should be one there that um you know you're not happy with you're not happy with so you end up changing it changing it changing it and it's annoying and then you know you're like, what do I do now? When you finally realize you just it just sucks so bad. I ended up I bought a dream box last year. I bought it on the Black Friday sale and I got it in January of this year. And you know, people talk about the price of it a lot, but I kind of did a rough estimate of um like the stuff I've bought over the last 20 years for storage and trying to make a happy workspace and stuff and I have spent <laughs> far and above what this this dream box cost in that that stuff you know so my husband was like yes get it and we'll be and it will be done so and I already have had a um, pink Mac toolbox that he bought me oh my gosh ten years ago but I'll tell you, if I didn't have that toolbox, I would buy, I would have bought a second um, drink box. So I use my toolbox for storage of like big stuff, like big bottles of things and stuff like that. And that's where I do all the messy stuff like paint. Um, but it costs significantly more than the dream box. So yeah, if I didn't have it, I just would have bought a second dream box by now. There we go. 
cranky, cranky. Cranky, cranky. I kind of um, wanted to actually get the Tim Holtz Vagabond instead of a, a, a Sizzix machine. Well, I mean, there's a Sizzix machine, but instead of a manual. Because, you know, I'm getting old. Why not? But he said it's discontinued because something else is coming in its place. So I was like, well, I'll wait and see what the something else is, I guess. But even if there is a something else, it's going to be some years before I could buy it. Because, yeah, I kind of, like I said, I, I'm a crafter on a budget. And sometimes you got to prioritize. Pieces. There's a whole circle. Pieces come out. Pieces come out. Come out. Come out. Now these little styluses from the Dollar Tree. Um, I bought two of them because I keep one in my um, in my die cutting stuff to use for like shaping flowers and stuff. Because they're you know that one end's pretty small. They haven't fallen apart on me yet, but the pokey thing. Don't recommend the pokey thing. Because apparently it's not sturdy enough for actual poking. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. Okay. Oh, so cool. I can see myself using this one a lot. pokey thing out? Maybe not. It might be loose enough to just... Sweet. I mean, seriously. That's, that is adorable. Okay. A nice little pile going one of those, huh? Okay. Scrappy scraps. Now. Get the nose too. Oops. I'd have to get on the interwebs and see how to put the bows together. My brain's not clicking with it. Okay, let's cut out this thank you. Thank you. And I think... No, well, it just embosses. I thought maybe it was meant for the foil. Like, Spellbinders has a hot foil system. I don't, don't know nothing about it, but... It has it. <laughs> thank you. Get this off of here and try it. Try it, try it, try it. Oh yeah. The little little trimmer since I put everything on the big one. And we'll trim this paper. So get a good spot. Get a little neater, huh? Let's see what we got. Okay. So. Oh, I saw somebody had a Cutter Pillar Pro on the Facebook Marketplace for like $50. And kind of interested but at the same time I'm like man why should she get rid of it did she break it so I might have to um, I might message her and ask her about it but I don't know if I really would want it because you know I don't know where I'd put it thank you nice fat thank you I'm using the right one So there's that. And what else? Let me see what else I got over here. Maybe that I can add to the cupping. Hmm. A little. I could 
filling will stay here. No, I don't want that one. Nobody. How about some butterflies? Tim Holtz butterflies. Number 661802. Because it is hard on your full-size machines. It's hard on their rollers to use these little dies and not, um, not like fill up the space. I just found a little piece in there. So, I, oops, let's put it out. I uh, try to try to fill it up, which I think I'm gonna replace poor little. That didn't cut all the way through. Mr. Sizzik's sidekick that I broke with um, We Are Memory Keepers uh, Mini Evolution. I think that's what I'm going to do. And Amazon's got like that, that kit kind of. It comes with some paper and some uh, nested circle dies for $59.99 right now. But then I found it online on um, eBay for 50 with free shipping. And then I found it on Joanne's website on sale right now too. So I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do. Let's see if I can get something on here. Wait a minute. Is that the back one? See, this one, this set always confuses me. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay, well, we could try a bow in black, couldn't we? Yes, we could. Let's do that. Fill up as much space as we can. Oh, oh, I'm so excited. July 10th, I think it's the 10th. Um... Fireworks are coming back to Magic Kingdom and Epcot. I am like overjoyed, like would almost want to cry about it. I have missed my Disney so much. And now the fireworks are coming back. So I am just, just beside myself. Oh, and I am. Um, here we go. Starting a new design team in July. Oh, no. Maybe I should have washi taped it. Um, it's been a lot of years since I've done design team stuff, but I'm kind of like, eh, it might be fun to get back in it. So I'm not going to be in it like hardcore like I was before because. You know, I do think you should be getting paid at least a little bit of money. Actual money, not just product. But, um, just to do one at a time, you know, I'm alright. Because there was at one point I was in four and I'm like, you know, doing a whole lot of work. <laughs> just for some product, you know. It got to the point where it didn't feel like it was worth it. Um, so, I'm just going to keep myself... You know, one at a time, two tops if they're very, very different, like, types of companies. Um, so I'll have an announcement about that soon. Well, in July. It's mid-June now, so. Oh, that bow moved on me. Stinking bow. So let's put a little more black in there and cut that again. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh, that's gonna be pretty. I'll tell you that already. Pokey thing. See, it's bent. No one likes a bent pokey thing, right? There's the thank. Oh, you just popped right out. You thank you, thank you, Butterfly. 
This black um, is really, really thick. This is the paper studio from Hobby Lobby. This is some thick paper, dude. Oh, and there's the price sticker. I hate that they do that. Why can't they just print it on there? Of course, I guess if they print it, they can't raise the price on you later, can they? Oh, I just realized I'm sounding very cynical today. I'm sorry. I'm not usually a cynical type of girl. All right, let's take this out. Dun, dun, dun. That's little parts. When the power stopped, Sam and I went outside and sat for a while and I was texting my daughter on my tablet because my phone was dead and I had just plugged it in and the power went out and uh, so I texted her and said, hey, well, we're sitting out here. The power went out. She's like, oh, was there a storm? I said, no, it's not, the storm's not here yet. It was black outside until it was coming, but um, I said, I don't know. So we sat out there for a while, and Sam and I watched the butterflies. We've got um, monarchs and the little yellow sulfur butterflies. The sulfur butterflies actually come from next door, because Larry's got the cassias, um, and that's what they... One of the things that the sulfur butterflies like to eat. But they always come over to my yard. And they'll like come fly around a little bit. And check things out and then go back home. They're so cute. They're just bright yellow. Little tiny guys. Ugh. They're just. They're, they're precious. I love them. Love them. Love them. Okay. Come on. You know what? That's where that sticker was. That's, uh, that's not wanting to come out. There we go. I wonder if that side's going to do the same thing. Yup. Yup. And so far we've only hatched two butterflies this year. One did well. And the other one um, hatched and seemed okay. But then the next day we found one on the ground that was alive and looked okay, but he couldn't fly. So I'm not sure. I'm assuming it's the one that hatched because he wasn't that far from where his, the chrysalis was. So we, um, I picked him up and put him on a, a penta plant. He spent a day there and then a day, like he, I'm not sure if he crawled off it or fell off it, a day on the brick that the pot was sitting on. I put everything up if I can it helps keep the ants out of the pots um, and then the third day he was just kind of laying there he was still alive but barely so I I, uh, I euthanized him I put him in the freezer and my husband's like that's a bug I'm like no these butterflies are not bugs that's something they're not they're important <laughs> They're not the flying cockroaches that are not important. Butterflies are important. So he makes fun of me when I when I do stuff like that. I had two last year that I um that were sickly and I use the noise. Because you know, you put them in the freezer and they die real fast because they go in the hypothermia and butterflies are kind of delicate and they need heat, so it's like a very humane thing to do. One left right there. Two left right there. See how fussy these are, but uh, isn't that pretty? Yes. Okay. Well, we did that. And I got this bow I think I'm gonna have to um cut. Yeah, because it's shifted. Darn it. Darn it. Okay, when that happens. Alright, put this here. I if I just get a bigger piece of black out and I cut some of those leaves at the same time. Let's see. Excuse my arm. Oh, yeah. And 
I like this paper. This paper is thin. Yeah. It's easier on your stuff. I'm just going to cut it to fit the mat. Or at least roughly. We're just going to fill that mat up. You'll see the butterflies come out of this easier too. This is this is thinner stuff. It's definitely not as but it's thinner and it cuts out of your electronic machine a lot easier. It's easier on the blade. So that's why I keep it I keep buying it because it's electronically cut so much better. Oh, but you know, I'm still going to need to cut that glitter for, well, yeah. So I can make it two-tone, but I'm not going to like that. There we go. That there. This. This. And this. Ooh, how about thank you? Let's cut the thank you out. Thank you all. We'll load up some of these. Let's see. Do that one. And this one. Not that one. Let's do that. What else we got? Ooh, I like that one. Position to get the most out of your paper, right? What else is in there? That's the big leaf. I don't want the big leaf. Let's see. Got room for another butterfly. I think. I think you think. Think. Looks like it still has a little debris from before. Looks like I had cut this one out in gold. Empty out. Okay. All right. Fill that mat. Cutting plate. Not electronic. It's on mat. And let's uh, cut it out. Dun, dun, dun. Here. Maybe I didn't like this paper. Of course, I didn't do it twice. Dang it. Why didn't I do it twice? Just got done telling you. I like to do it twice. And did I do it twice? No. No, I did not. Oh, well, thank you. Bank came out. I can get the U out too with it. See, sometimes, sometimes things just don't go well, do they? Because you mess up your own ideas. Let's see if I can get the U out. Pop it out. too upset, right? friends who went back to Disney World today. I was like, I'm so jealous. That's okay. We will be over there 
the middle, around the middle of next month to go to Ohana. So I'm happy about that. I mean, it's for breakfast, but at this point, I don't care. I just want to be there. I just want to go to there. Let's well, see, these might actually pop out. See, I sh should have ran it twice. But no. Don't listen to your own brain, Amy. Why would you do that? I thought, oh, this paper spinner will be fine, but it's got like a plastic back on it. I kind of forgot about that. Just because the center don't mean crap. Eh, I don't like that. Well, shut boopy. Shut boopy. Shut boopy. Let's see how this one goes. That other one popped out, but it um it didn't look very nice, so I'm not keeping it. I don't know, maybe I'll cut it up. I always do that. I do not mind cutting stuff up. Well, let's see. Okay, this one might be okay. Oh yeah, look at that. That one worked. Even though I screwed it up. Let's see. Another one that'll come out. Nicely. <laughs> oh man. A little frustration, huh? Not doing it. I'm just going to try and cut a few more to finish that bow off. I'm going to be very hard on my machine. I need this piece and this piece. Maybe a matter of foliage. twice. Dos. Dos cranks for four. There we go. Bring it through. Back it back through. This should behave much better. Ooh, you hear thunder? Thunder, thunder. Okay. Where did another piece fall? Do you cut? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Poke it. stop this here and clean up and then come back and do the big uh, frames. Alrighty, so I got my mess cleaned up. Here's all the die cuts that we just did. I'm going to show you how to put the bows together in another video. I got out some um, chipboard and some grunge board. And we're going to try cutting these bigger dies out. I want to see especially how these frames work. I keep like the cardboard and stuff that comes in packages of all kinds of things. So Let's uh, let's give this a shot. And if I remember right, to do a big die. All you do need is one cutting plate. It's been years since I've done one, so let's see. So got your your plate, your material that you're cutting, your die, 
And let's see. I'm gonna crank it through. Here we go. I think I need both plates. Because it did not do anything. <laughs> like I said, y'all, it's been years, okay? Yeah, remember, we've been in the land of wafer thin dyes for ever and ever. No, all right, now, come on. I'd be interested to know what your first die cut machine was. Mine was the Spellbinders Wizard Machine. Yeah, see, look at that, guys. Oh, yeah. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with these, right? Um, oh, look, and even like these. These would be good collage fodder for sure. Um, Spellbinders Wizard Machine. And I actually got it for free because um, it was about the time, well, it was when they first came out. And I thought they were pretty interesting. And I was trying to decide whether I wanted to do that or just get a Sizzix Big Shot because I knew, you know, what I was getting into with the Big Shot, right? And uh, Stacy Karen saw me poking around the interwebs asking about it. And she offered to send me one for free. And I was like, sweet. And of course, my smarty smart pants husband was like, man, that's the first time your big mouth ever got you something good instead of trouble. <laughs> but yeah, so I got one. And uh, I used it. I took it to crops out of town and stuff and showed it off. And um, then when they, a year or two later, when they came out with the new model, they were offering a trade-in. If you had the first model, you could send it in and it would give you like, I don't know how much money it was off. Cut out of the grunge board really super slick. Um, towards, you know, the purchase of the new one. And I sent it in and I didn't pay anything. I They gave me that one free and then since I sent it back, they just sent me the next one. I kind of want to cut that. All right, make like a tab. I'm gonna hold on to that. Um, so that was pretty cool. And ooh, let's try this really heavy white. Came out of a package of some sort. Um, I used it for years and years and years. And actually until I actually just quit doing manual die cutting altogether, I um, got into the silhouette machine and now, do I want the shiny side? Yes. Um, the only die cut machine I kept was my little red Sizzix side kit. Because I did like some of the little letters and stuff that I had. But I sold everything else off. And now though, I wish I had kept ooh, the wizard machine. Just because it was so freaking cool. And their machines have changed so, so so much over the years. I kind of wish I still had had that original. Oh yeah, see? And we're gonna paint these up, ink them up, do all kinds of crap to them. So, um, I had Silhouette Portrait. That was the first one I had. And, well no, I take that back. I, I don't know if anybody out there remember this, but Fiskars had this little cute die cut machine. It was electronic and it had little books with it. It made me think of those books for little kids that are electronic, where they like leapfrog books, leap pad, something like that. It was like that. And that sucker, let me tell you what, it cut so nicely. I never had a bad cut out of that machine. Grinch board flowers. And, uh, I only sold it because, well, actually I didn't even sell it. I think I just put it in the scrapbook store garage sale. And if it didn't sell, sell, I just pitched it. But they quit making the stuff for it. So eventually, I mean, there were no, no blades, no nothing. Because if they didn't come out with any more books, I was fine with that. I liked what I had. But um, you can't use a cutter without a blade. So yeah, that, I can't remember if somebody actually bought it in the garage sale or if it just ended up getting pitched, but 
I love that little thing. It was so cute. And like I said, it, you know, all these electronic machines now and that thing cut the, the nicest cuts out of anything since then. Uh, let's do, I'm not going to be able, I'm not going to be able to get everybody on here. Um, these are just grunge board scraps I'm using up. I like that flower. Get this little guy. So yeah. And then I got my first silhouette because I had a friend who had one. And I can't remember if she just didn't like it or she couldn't figure out how to use it or what, but she shoved it in the closet and never played with it again. And she one day asked me if I wanted it. I'm like, yep, I didn't even know what it was, but sure. Sound like something fun to play with. And I've been addicted ever since. I sold my Silhouette Cameo 2 before we moved down here because like 80% of my craft stuff was going to have to go in storage and I didn't want to put it in storage and have it get ruined. So I just sold it. I mean, with everything. I had a really nice accessory tote for it and stuff and just sold all of that off. And then once we got into our apartment, and got set up and stuff and I knew what my craft space was going to be like. I picked up a used um, Cricut, even though I'm very anti Provo craft, but I picked up a used Cricut just to have something because it, it was small. But it didn't work. So I was a little ticked about that. So I th literally threw it in the dumpster and I bought a, let's see, two years ago used cameo from someone in my church who sold me one that didn't work and was leaking grease and all this stuff and so I'm a little bitter and but I kept it and I cleaned it up and I thought if my daughter could use it with her computer because her computer was older than mine then I would just let her have it well we tried and even though I cleaned it up it was still leaking grease it just wasn't was not happening so I threw it out. <laughs> so it's two machines in two years I've had to throw out because they were crap. And then I gave Kristen the portrait that I still had. And um, then I got the four last year, two years ago, when the, when the four came out anyway, for Mother's Day. So there's all those cuts. It'd be some fun stuff to play with. We're going to decorate these up. We're going to try shaping these flowers. Um, I haven't bought the like official Tim Holtz Sizzics shaping kit. But I mean, I've got stylus. And stylus is, is what's the plural of stylus? Styli? Styler? Anyway, I've got a couple. So, <laughs> and I've got a foam pad. So I can, I can, uh, I can do that. So yeah, and then look, we got the inserts. I am. I'm going to trim that so it's like a tab. Okay. So, this was long and just rambling and goofy. I know, but my power went out a few times and it's storming, so it's probably going to go out again. I wonder if I can talk my husband into getting Sonic for dinner instead of me trying to cook and pray that the power doesn't go out while the ravioli's halfway cooking. Because um, we have this fabulous chicken, bacon, mozzarella ravioli. OMG. So, anyway. I'm going to try and talk him out of, hey, let's just run down to Sonic and get some tots and a hamburger. Because I know the power is going to go out again. Um, next video will be hooching this stuff up that we cut out of the chipboard. And um, that's it. Remember, be excellent to each other and go make something. Bye-bye. <laughs>